Hi there, welcome, great to have you with us, Jen. It is time for Faith Matters once again. Yes, it is. And as you know, this is really our passion to be able to bring the Word of God to you across these airwaves to wherever you are watching from. And the reason why we're bringing it to you is because we want to see you grow in your faith in God. There is nothing more important in our walk with the Lord than to be in a place of great faith, uh, especially when we want to overcome and walk in victory. So this is us to you and we can't wait to get into Faith Matters. We are going to have an amazing 30 minutes together. You are going to be blessed and uh, I want to encourage you sit back, relax, enjoy what God has from His Word. This is Faith Matters. It's all happening right here from our studio and we trust you are going to have a great time with us wherever you're watching in the world. Now remember, email us directly at fm at myfaithtv.com fm at myfaithtv.com. That's the email address. Those emails come straight to us. And Jen, we've just been overwhelmed with so many emails. Yes, Hasn't it been wonderful? It's and uh, all the questions that are coming in, we've been able to get uh, written back to each and every one of you. So if you have a question relating to faith, all right, get those questions off to us because the segment at the end of the program, we're going to be talking about those questions. And today we've got some very special ones we're going to be answering as well for you. Then don't forget as well, the book that we're looking at is the book entitled Living Full. It's out. It's available on Amazon, on the Kindle store. You can go and get it. Search for Living Full by the author Andre Rabit. And this book will come straight to you. It's a download. It's available. And this is what we're teaching out of over this series of programs. And Jen, we're going to be having a great time. We're talking about that foundation of faithfulness today. So it's all systems go. I trust you ready. Stay with us. This is Faith Matters. Wow, I am ready for what God has today, Jen. Yes. It's all going to happen. We are talking from the chapter in the book over here, dealing with the foundation of faithfulness. If you haven't got your copy, order it on Amazon or Kindle. All those details are on the screen. Come on, let's talk about, I love the scripture, Matthew 25, 21. This is going to lay it down for you and for us as we go on our journey about faith today. Matthew 25, 21 says, His master said to him, Well done, you upright. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Honorable and admirable and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge over much. Enter into and share the joy, the delight, the blessedness which your master enjoys. What a powerful scripture oh, that is. Powerful. And again, this comes, brings us essentially back to our theme scripture for the whole of this book, Living Full, which is in 3, three John, John 2, two That's where right. it speaks about that God wants to see us prosper in our souls. That's right. Because if our souls prosper, then everything else prospers because we are in a position to live full for God as long as our souls are prospering. That's so right. when we speak about the foundation of faithfulness. Faithfulness essentially is the character of God. Yeah. That is who He is. And so to begin with, we need to understand that when we are living faithful, that means we are in a position to receive the fullness of God in our lives. And this is why. And it's so important that we understand the character of God in this whole thing. And, mm. and you know, when we have to understand what faith really is, because we know that when we are are walking by faith and in faith that is the only way that we can actually receive and have the fulfillment of God's promises in our lives that's what the word says the only way that we inherit those promises is by faith and patience so in order to have faith we need to understand what is misplaced faith that's right Okay, you can have sincere faith, godly faith, Bible faith, but you can also have misplaced faith. And that's why it's important to understand the foundation of faithfulness. To be faithful, now I know there's the Greek dictionary and the Hebrew dictionary, yeah. and it goes in to explain what faithfulness is pertaining to the character of God and the nature of God. Now, for someone who is faithful, 
it is someone who is described as being consistent, somebody who is steadfast. I mean, there's so many different words that we can explain it. But even more than that, faithful is trustworthy. Now, when someone is trustworthy or if something is trustworthy, we are able to put our hope or rather secure our hope in something mm. and keep it there. Right. So if somebody is trustworthy, in other words, the nature of God, if God is faithful, it means he is trustworthy, which means we can secure our hope in him and keep it there. So now remember I spoke about misplaced trust or misplaced faith. That's right. That is never going to cause you to live in the fullness of God. Your faith has to be in a place where you so convinced about who God is that you have decided to set or place your hope and hope means earnest expectation That's right so when we place our earnest expectation in what in god mm. in him and we keep our expectation in there andre why i'm saying this is so important mm. you and i have just uh, recently been to apostle maldonado his conference in mm. Miami uh, and he spoke again about misplaced faith as well and how important especially in the last days how important it is for, for the children of God all of us in order to really finish our race in order to really stay strong and live full in God we have to make sure that our faith is placed in the character of God now it, he kind of gave this example and the reason why I'm making this point on this is because so many of the responses that we get from your emails speak about mm. misplaced faith mm. and I'll tell you why he spoke about some believing God for a particular thing okay now all of us have are in a position where we believe in and trust in God for a promise in his word or something that we feel you know that we is ours you're right he was specifically believing God for a piece of property a piece of land and they fasted and they prayed as a church and they went before God and they stood on his word and they confessed that it everything the word told them to do believed with all of their heart come on some of you are, are identifying with that already I know because I've seen the emails that you've sent us so you do everything you know to do to stand in faith mm. but that land was sold out from under them that's right and he lost the land and he went to God and he said God do you not love me anymore what is this why is it that even after I stood on your word and I believed it was ours and you know I confessed I fasted I prayed I did everything your word told me to do and now the land isn't there and God spoke to him and mm. said, where did you place your faith? Did you place it in the land, in the thing that you believe in me for? Or did you place it in My me? Word. Yeah. Oh, this is so important to understand this. Yeah. And you know how you know when your faith is misplaced? What is obsessing you? What are you obsessed over? Are you more obsessed over the things that you believe in God for? Or are you more obsessed over him? Because we do not know sometimes the bigger picture. And even though we believe for something and we trust it and we really you know, want this to happen and it doesn't happen the way we wanted it to happen, we want to throw the towel in on faith. We want to walk away. Yeah. Why? Because the thing that you are obsessed about didn't happen. No, your faith was placed in that thing. It was not placed in God. Do you not think God knows all and loves you and wants to see you prosper? And even if those things that you put your trust in, if they don't materialize, don't you know in Him is everything? He is your portion. He is your comfort. He is the one who will always make a way for you. Even if it's not the way you want it, His will is always perfect concerning you. And so we need to understand that in order to live and position ourselves for the fullness of God, we cannot have misplaced faith we have to have the foundation of faithfulness and that is make sure mm. that our faith is placed in the character and the trustworthiness of God and not in things you know Jen one of the statements we we make in the book is this faithfulness secures your hope in God does. and his word mm -hmm. and I think we, we 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 need to understand that that you and I when we are faithful what is that doing it is giving me a security in who i'm putting my faith in god 
And that's where my security comes, my hope in God from His Word. And His Word is amazing. His, His Word, when, when, when you can shift and put your faith in Him and His Word, which represents Him, and not the thing, that's where the shift needs to take place. Because so many of us are, are tied up. So many of us are overwhelmed, as Jenny was saying, in the things. We read Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness and all the things will be added. And all of us long after the things. And uh, there's faith preachers that will teach a word and say, well, name it and claim it and, and, and all of that. Those things are fine. But, and they're all, they're all in the Word. And, and they're all in the Word. But yeah, here's the point. When the thing becomes more important than the one who gives the thing. All right, that is where the problem is. And this is where people get confused. You get wrapped up in that need of your house. You get wrapped up in that need of your car. You get wrapped up in, in uh, that need of whatever that situation, the thing that you have need of. And it is all consuming. Imagine if you could channel that energy of the thing into the giver, the person who gives the thing. All right, that's what we're talking about. That's the shift that needs to come in your life and watch what God's going to do. Because when you're faithful, this is what happens. Exactly. And then that makes me think of, of what we experienced with our son, Joshua. Mm -hmm. You know, when I know that we've shared part of our testimony already with you on the program. But again, I felt in my spirit, I really felt so impressed to share this with you. You know, when we lost Joshua, I remember our son, um, he was our firstborn and he only lived 11 hours. And in those in that time where, where we lost him, um, I remember being on my own in the kitchen and having to deal with all of this because it was so unexpected. And I remember the Holy Spirit speaking straight into my heart. And he said to me, Jenny, what do you feel in your heart about me? Mm. How do you feel about me? You were believing for the sun. Uh, everything seemed fine. You know, everything was going well. This is my gift to you. And now he's gone. What does that do about your feeling concerning me? And immediately in my spirit, I knew what to say. And I mm. spoke from my heart to him and I said, God, do you know what? I have known you since I was a little girl. I have known your character. You have never wanted anything but best for me. You have all always walked with me and anything I've needed you have given me but more than that I have always been able to trust in you right. and I said and God even now with what I'm going through I do not understand it but I do and I know this sounds crazy but I said I give you the benefit of the doubt I know you God and that is more real to me than what I'm going through so I don't understand what I'm going through but I know that your plans are still good for me I know that you'll still work all things to the good for me I know your word still mm. says that blessed is the prosperity of my womb I will still have children I will still have children that are healthy and that that will grow from my womb I will still have it I believe in your promises I don't know what happened here but I don't doubt your character and can I tell you the minute I did that my healing came mm, mm. my healing began from that moment and I want you to know it doesn't matter what you are going through what you were trusting God for what you really felt was his and you stood on the word and you stood and everything and when that thing did not come through the way you wanted it to I want you to know that is not the end God still is faithful to you yeah. but there's something over the next horizon for you there's always a reason <laughs> don't give up on the person and the character of God mm. that is who we put our trust in not the things we believe in for mm. what's hope earnest expectation in all right in him that's that's what we're talking about and when you place your trust one who places his hope in something or someone and keeps it there mm -hmm. never wavering never quitting that's what faith is and uh, i trust you've been blessed now i want to challenge you stand strong never quit never give up and remember faith matters
Wow, what a time we've had today. I, I just am so blessed, you know, each and every time as we spend more time in this Word, Jen, and as we, we go, I, I'm just loving going through the book yes. again and uh, I want to encourage you come on get your own copy go on to Amazon go on to uh, um, Kindle download your own copy of the book entitled uh, Living Full by Andre Rabit search for it download it and watch what's going to happen in your life your life will never ever be the same so be blessed and uh, get your own copy now Jen just very quickly let's 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 talk. We, we've got letters coming in and uh, people are writing to us at fm at myfaithtv.com, fm at myfaithtv.com. Uh, get those letters through to us, send those emails. We want to hear from you wherever you are in the world, whatever your question. And we've got someone with a question tonight. Come on, we tell can. us. Okay, so this is a question from Musenga Arthur, uh, who has sent in this email saying, I am a Christian, a child of God. Right. Um, but the thing is, I'm failing to read the Bible. <laughs> what can I do to develop an interest in reading the Word of God? Read John first. All right. The first book of the Bible you've got to read is the book of John. You know, Jen, there, there, there's some genealogies that even I would fall asleep with. And, uh, <laughs> or if you start in the book of Job, it could be a little bit unpleasant or lamentations. If you start somewhere in the wrong place and you don't understand it sequentially and you don't understand what God is saying and you haven't grown, uh, the Bible is a walk of faith. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a, it's a book that you've got to grow in your faith in every area in your life. So I, I really would encourage you, uh, Musengu, uh, I really want to say to you, go, go to easy chapters, go to easy things, go to the, the, the beginning, read the Psalms, read things that encourage you. All right, and watch the difference. Watch what's going to happen in your life. And uh, that's one of the starting places that I believe. Even the book of Ephesians is a beautiful, beautiful book as well, speaking about your new life in Christ Jesus. Now, not only that, something that has really been a blessing to us um, is if you know people, um, and we can even, I mean, you can watch the network and find amazing preachers and people of the Word of God. And their ministries have devotions that you can can get book daily devotions. Even that is an amazing way to take a hold of that every day and have a devotion with the Lord. Use, use them as guides to get you into the Word of God. It'll help you understand it more. And the minute you begin to see the Word work for you, the beginning it kind of baits you and it makes you so excited for God's Word. So, you know, we want to encourage you. You have to get into the Word. And the more you begin to see it work in your life, the more you become addicted to it because it is a lie. Mm. and it energizes you and it builds your faith in God. But start, decide to start today and see what it will do for you. You know, Jen, another thing I could say to Masengu about this as well, the Holy Spirit. Yes. The, the, the Holy Spirit is the one that makes the pages come alive. When you go to Bible college, um, there's what we call the Logos Word and there's the Rhema Word. Now, the Logos Word is the printed material, the, the written Word of God. But Masenga, I want you to understand that the Word of God is not a story about God. The Word of God is a representation of who God is. Right. It is the living God. That's why they call it the living Word of God. So when you are reading the Word, you are communicating and you are having a time with God. It's written for it's, you. It's written for you, but you've got to have the Holy Spirit bring it alive from that Logos to that Rhema. And that's a very important point that I want every one of you to understand. Don't just read the Bible just for the sake of reading the Bible. And don't just read it because it's the right thing to do. It's good. All right. You've got to read the Bible saying, Lord, I'm going to read this chapter and I want you to speak to me, make challenge me, make it real to me. Let me experience you. Let me feel it. Uh, it's like when you go into a live Holy Ghost spirit filled church and you, you're in that place yes, yeah. and the atmosphere around you, you stand there and you say, wow, I love this. Yes. 
when you get into the Word, that will be the same result, Masenga, in your life, when the Holy Spirit comes into your life. And, and I want you to understand this. When you ask Jesus into your heart, uh, the Bible speaks about a portion of the Holy Spirit becoming alive inside of you. You have the living God inside of you. But when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, when you get the evidence of speaking in tongues, when you, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit as Jesus uh, uh, spoke about and as He encouraged and He said to the disciples, wait, wait for there is coming someone after me. When, when I leave, there's coming the Holy Spirit and they waited in that day of Pentecost and, and, and in that upper room experience and the Holy Spirit came. What did it do? It made the church alive. It gave them boldness. And that's, Jenny, what the Holy Spirit will do for you in the Word of God. You will be alive. And so just reach out and say, Holy Spirit, I want you to touch me, fill me. I want to experience who you are because I know I will never ever be the same. So God bless each and every one of you. I am proud of FBN and the work that Apostle Andre and Jenny Rebbit are doing for the body of Christ. We love you so much. Keep up the great work in the Lord. Wow, what a time we've had. I, I enjoyed that. Yes. You know, uh, getting into the Word of God, getting into uh, the second chapter on this book about faithfulness and understanding what that is all about, and then getting into those questions, Jen. Wasn't that special Very today special. as well? And, and what is so awesome about it as well is that we've learned about the Holy Spirit's part in all of this. Yeah. Don't think that you can ever grow in faith without the Holy Spirit. He's the one who makes Jesus real to you. He's the one who makes the Word real to you. It's the Holy Spirit of God, a light that brings revelation to you. So we're just so blessed that you are watching these programs, that they're touching you, that you know you are free as a child of God to open up your heart and, and say, Holy Spirit, fill me fresh, overflow inside of me, that your word becomes fresh revelation to me, That's that right. I can live full of you. FM at myfaithtv.com. That's the email address right to us, okay? Those emails come straight to Jenny and I, FM at my myfaithtv.com. We'd love to hear from you and uh, we want to be able to answer those questions. Then ladies, don't forget Jenny's blog. Yes. All right, ladies, lettersfromgen.com. Letters <laughs> All right, on your screen right now, log on to lettersfromgen.com. It is a blog site and uh, every week you get an update and a personal letter. This is for ladies only. All right, so ladies, get on there and uh, subscribe to it. Your life will be touched and changed. I know you're penning letters all the time and uh, it's exciting and there's a new one coming out even this week, each and every week. Every week. There's a new letter out for you. You can read it. You can get encouraged. You put in your email address into that blog page. Remember, don't just go to the blog page. Go to it and subscribe to it. Then that way it automatically comes on email to you. So you know every time Jenny does an update of her letter, that letter comes straight into your email inbox and you can read it even right there. So a great opportunity for you to uh, get their letters from Jen.com. That's it. All right, it's going to be good. It is good. All right, we love you. We appreciate you. Stay with us. And uh, yeah, we're going to have another good time. We trust you've been blessed. Don't forget, go and purchase the book, Living Full from Kindle and Amazon. And uh, wherever you want to buy it online, it's available for you. We trust God has blessed you. Get those emails to us and register on that blog page, Letters from Jen. We love you. We'll see you next week, same time, same place, from Faith Matters. Remember, it is only faith that matters.